everybody, welcome back. In this video, we will learn about complex ion equilibria. But first, what is a complex ion? Well, a complex ion has a central metal ion that is bound to one or more ligands. The metal is a Lewis acid. And what was the Lewis acid again? Excellent, an electron pair acceptor. And a ligand is a Lewis base. And this is an electron pair donor. Now, the types of bonds that are formed between this Lewis acid and this Lewis base, these metal and ligands, um, is not a covalent bond, nor is it an ionic bond. It's called a coordination bond. So there's a whole field of coordination chemistry. And if you go on to take advanced inorganic chemistry, you will study it. Um, but in this class, we will not cover it too much, although you're seeing examples of these coordination compounds through this complex ion equilibria. So an example would be the silver cation plus ammonia to make this complex ion. And so the cation is the Lewis acid. It will accept a electron pairs from the ammonia, which is a Lewis base. Remember, ammonia's Lewis dot structure has lone pairs on the nitrogen, so they make for good Lewis bases. All right, the KF. So for complex ion equilibria, we usually use KF, F for formation. So it's products over reactants. And in this case, it's 1.7 times 10 to the seventh. So it's extremely favorable. <laughs> and so it's very large KF value here. Um, so therefore we would imagine that the equilibrium would lie far to the right here um, in favor of products. All right, let's work an example problem together. Let's say we have a 120 milliliter sample of a solution that is 2.8 times 10 to the negative three molar in silver nitrate, and it's mixed with 225 milliliters of a solution that is 0.1 molar in sodium cyanide. After the solution reaches equilibrium, what concentration of the silver cation remains? So first we have to imagine what's in our beaker. We put in silver nitrate and all those nitrate salts are soluble in water. And so when it dissolves, it dissolves completely into the silver cations and the nitrate anions. And sodium cyanide also is soluble in water because it's a sodium salt. So therefore we have sodium cations and cyanide anions. And you have to imagine when these mix together, who wants to hang out? <laughs> well, this is information I would have to provide for you on an assessment. Um, it's silver and cyanide form a complex ion, but you're not expected to know that. So I'd have to give you the reaction or at least um, give you the, the formula 
of the complex ion, so of silver and cyanide together, as well as the KF value. So don't stress too much if you're taking my course. This is a second semester general chemistry course. And once again, you're not expected to predict the formula for complex ion that takes crystal field theory to do that sort of prediction. But just follow with me here. Um, so sodium nitrate will be spectator ions. It's also soluble in water, and so they'll just swim around solutions. So we're going to focus mainly on the silver and the cyanide coming together to form a complex ion. Now the concentration of silver ions in solution is equal to 2.8 times 10 to the negative third molar. And that comes from this concentration here. The multiple ratio of silver nitrate to silver ion is one to one. So the concentration of silver nitrate is the same as the concentration for the silver cation. Same goes for the cyanide concentration. Cyanide has a concentration of 0 0.10 molar. And that comes from the fact that we added a 0 0.10 molar solution of sodium cyanide into our beaker. Sodium cyanide to cyanide is a one to one mole ratio. All right, however, when you add things to your beaker, they dilute one another. So we need to take that into account what the actual concentrations are after they mixed. So first, before we do that, we need to calculate V total, the volume total in our beaker. And that is 120 milliliters plus 225 milliliters is equal to 345 milliliters. And so after mixing, we need to use our dilution formula M1 V1 is equal to M2 V2. So we have our M1s here. We have our V1s as well. That was the 120. So V1 and 225. And we have our final volume, V2, which is the total volume there, 345. And we're trying to solve for M2 for both ions. All right, so the silver ion concentration after mixing is equal to 9.7 391 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. And the cyanide after mixing is equal to 6.5217 times 10 to the negative second molar. All right, so the reaction that I would have to provide for you since you don't know how many cyanide ligands would want to um, coordinate with silver. In this case, it's two. And the complex ion would look like this. And I'd have to also give you the KF, and it's one times 10 to the 21. So definitely favorable when these two find each other in our beaker. They're going to want to form this complex ion. So we're going to put in our initial concentrations after mixing. And which one of these reactants is definitely like the limiting reactant here? Yeah, it's definitely the silver cation. We didn't have as much of it in solution as we did the cyanide here. Um, and also something to make note of um, before we move on, because KF is so large, and also because the concentration of cyanide is so much greater than the concentration of the silver cation. This reaction goes to completion. So 
so really our x now, um, if we went through this and we wrote minus x minus 2x plus x, x is basically based on our limit and reactant, right? So for example, this is minus 97391 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now you would write zero here, but the question is asking us what concentration of silver remains. It's essentially gonna be zero, but I'm gonna put X there because we're gonna solve for it. You're gonna see it's super dilute. This one is minus two times 9.7391 times 10 to the negative fourth. And so we have 6.3269 times 10 to the negative second. This one is plus x, so plus 9.7391 times 10 to the fourth, 9.7391 times 10 to the fourth. Okay, so once again, because our kf value is so large, and because we started with way more cyanide than we did the silver cation, this reaction essentially goes to completion based on our Leamington reactant, the silver cation. And so I'm putting X here because I want to know exactly what the concentration is left over. But once again, it's essentially going to be zero here. But, you know, for certain applications, you need to work in very, very dilute solutions. So, for example, if you're testing for lead in drinking water, you would hope that the concentration is super dilute, right? So, you know, when you're doing some sort of water analysis, as an example, or soil analysis, then you're going to be working with very dilute concentrations. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and set up the KF expression of products over reactants. So 9.7391 times 10 to the fourth over X, which is the silver cation, times the concentration of cyanide at equilibrium. All right, and then when you solve for X, you get two times 10 to the negative 22nd molar of silver cations left over after the complex ion has formed and reached equilibrium here. So once again, as I've said, this number is essentially zero, right? For most applications, it's pretty negligible, right? But there are some applications where knowing the exact concentration, no matter how dilute it is, is really critical. Um, so once again, um, complex ion, you have a central metal ion acting as a Lewis acid. You have a ligand acting as a Lewis base. The formation constants for a lot of these complex ions are relatively large, favoring product formation. In this example here, we're mixing two solutions that were soluble in water, but once our silver and cyanide found one another, they wanted to form a complex ion. We had to make sure we calculate the concentrations of each of those solutions after mixing. So don't forget your dilution formula, M1V1 is equal to M2V2. We set up our raised table, um, knowing full well that it went to completion. However, um, you know we wanted to put X there for silver so we can know exactly how much would be left over after the formation of the silver um, cyanide complex um, reaches equilibrium. Right. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.